All right, something I tell my students all the time, whenever you have an, a B in front or any kind of number in front of your X inside of your function, you got to factor that number out. See, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get our function in this form. This is gonna be A times square root of B times X minus C plus D. So we want our coefficient of X to be one. You can see right now, our coefficient is two thirds. And so what we need to do then, the most common way to be able to factor it out or to rewrite an expression as a product, multiplying, is to factor. How do you factor out a two thirds? I think it's pretty easy when you say like two, two X plus four, it's like, how do you factor it out? And you say, oh, they have in common a two, so you factor out the two, right? X plus two, and you're like, okay, good. Like I know how to factor, and you can always check your work, right? Multiply it back out, and you get a two X plus four. But how the heck do you factor out a two thirds? Because I don't know what two thirds basically goes into there. Let's go and take a look at a different way that we can do this. So I have a two thirds X, plus one. How can I factor out the two thirds? Well, a lot of times when you're thinking about factoring, it can be overwhelming because you're like, I don't know what they have in common. Like what does a two thirds and a one have in common that I can factor out? So then it kind of brings into the point of like, well, technically when you're factoring out, what exactly are you doing? We said we're taking out the common factor of two, but what exactly does that mean? If you look at this, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a two X, dividing it by two to give me X. I'm taking a four divided by two, and that's giving me a two. So I'm taking whatever number I'm dividing both of these terms by, I'm putting it on the outside. All right, so two thirds, Whenever I divide that number, so when I take that term divided by two, whatever is left over, I'm gonna put inside this parentheses. So let's go and do this. Two thirds X divided by two thirds. Well, that's just gonna be an X. This one might be a little confusing. What is one divided by two thirds? But there are some things you do know. So let's go and take a look at that. If I have one divided by two thirds, you recognize it like, oh yeah, you can't divide by fractions, right? You need to get rid of your fraction. You multiply by the reciprocal. So you multiply by three halves on both sides. So therefore, that goes to one, so you have a three halves divided by one, which is just going to be a three halves. So therefore, this is X plus a three halves. And if you think about it, guys, that actually makes sense because when you multiply back out, right? Remember how we multiply this? Two times X is two X, two times two is four. When you multiply this back over, you have a two thirds times X, which is a two thirds X. You multiply two thirds times a three half, those are reciprocals of each other. That's gonna give you back to a one. Now, wait ahead and rewrote this. I also don't like having my D in front. Sometimes you'll see that a lot in textbooks or on math problems. Let's go and put that out there, right? I like having my D here. Remember, there was no addition or subtraction sign in front of the one. But therefore, if there's nothing in front of it, we can assume that, or presume that it is going to be a positive. Because obviously if it had a negative in front of it, it would be represented as a negative. So now I want you to see here is we have a lot of operations. We have a reflection on the outside. So therefore, if it's a vertical reflection, that's gonna be a reflection about the x-axis. We have a vertical shift up one. Then inside here, we have a horizontal, let's see, if it's less than between zero and one, it's gonna be a horizontal stretch. So we have a horizontal stretch of two thirds, as well as a horizontal shift of three halves. What are we gonna grab? first. Well, the main important thing that I want you to understand is the way I like to do this is I like to break this apart in two parts. The first part is going to be the orientation. All right. What I want to do is I want to know, all right, where is this graph going? So we know that the um, y equals the square root of x looks like this. Okay. So now what's happening here is this graph is being reflected about the x-axis, right? So now it's, so take this graph, it's being reflected about the x-axis. And then we're having a horizontal stretch of two thirds. So I'm not gonna be exact here, guys. I'm just gonna say, all right, it's gonna be horizontal stretch. So it's gonna be a little bit skinnier or something like that, right? All right, the next one, the next step is going to be the translations. That is going to be everything left and right. So you can see here, we're gonna be shifting it left three halves and then up one. So all I'm simply gonna do here, so if I'm gonna go by ones, right? We're going left three halves. So that's one and one half, right? So one and one half, and then we're gonna go up one. So it's right there. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just taking this coordinate point, which is at zero, zero. I'm shifting it left one and one half going up one. And then I'm just gonna like basically copy paste my translation here to go ahead and do this. And let's say, it, you know, look something like that. Now we can identify the domain and range because again, this is very, very important to recognize. How far left is this graph? Well, that's going to be at a negative three halves. How high is this graph, right? Well, that's at a one. The reason why that's important is because when I wanna identify my domain and range, Let's actually, let me graph this. So, so you just make sure you go from there and then you shift it left and right. All right, so let's go and figure out what my domain is. Domain is gonna be basically how far left the graph is going, which in this case is going to be a negative three halves, how far to the right it's going, which is going to be a positive infinity. And then the range is gonna be basically how low does the graph go, which is gonna be from negative infinity to how high is it gonna go, which is going to be a positive one. Hopefully this video brought you some value in being able to identify the transformations and graph it. And if so, I know the next video is gonna give you value as well. Cheers.